Here we are on Earthshaker. Now, the chances are, if you own this game, more than likely, your Earthquake Institute building is static, meaning it doesn't move. But, today, I'm gonna be showing you how to install the mod that allows the Earthquake Institute building to sink into the play field, which, if you didn't already know, was its original intent. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this play field up. Might be the first time I've ever had the play field completely vertical like this. What we need to access is luckily all the way down here. So, oh man. All right, so this is not gonna be as fun as I would like it to be. All right, let's go over what you're gonna be getting inside of the box once you receive it. You're gonna be getting this honestly very well crafted mech. I mean, bravo. I mean, everything is uh, looks and feels pretty heavy duty. I'm a little impressed, honestly. So, then you have your instructions that have pictures all throughout it. We're going to be following this. And then you're going to have two washers. Don't really know what those are for yet. And your wiring harness. This will probably be the last thing that we attach. So, all right, let's get this out of the way for right now. According to the instructions, we're going to be needing a Phillips head and a quarter inch socket. So I believe we're going to need to access this whole mech. I say mech, it's not a mech right now, but we need to remove the connector that is inside this building right now. And it doesn't look like that's going to be uh, as easy as I'd like it to be. Alright. Now we need to remove both of these quarter inch According to the instructions, we're going to need to push this up through the top. Although I'm not seeing that possibility. What's it catching on? There we go. So that's been removed. I'm eventually going to be doing a complete restore on this earth shaker so i'm not going to worry about getting this all cleaned up just yet um but according to the instructions i need to remove these two phillips screws right here and then i need to remove these rivets a lot of you out there that's probably going to be challenging because i'm not sure how many of you have ever had to remove rivets before it's going to be fairly easy for me so Let's get these two Phillips screws out right now. All right, so now those are removed. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I don't need to, but I guess I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Then typical. All right, so the objective is to remove this bracket right here. That's what it looks like. This whole plastic piece is going to be attaching to the new unit, so we no longer need this. All right, there's a couple of methods we can go about doing this rivet removal. I'm going to, I usually just use my hand drill. I do also have a drill press over here that would also work, so we're going to try both methods and just see what happens.
All right, so by using that drill press, I removed basically that washer portion, which is holding that piece essentially in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the actual hand drill and show you how I do it with this one over here. So now that both of those washers, there we go. The rivets have been removed. So uh, needless to say, use the hand drill method, guys. Uh, just if you're curious on what size I used, 532nd. That's the uh, drill bit size I used. All right, so according to the instructions, I need to remove this side right here. So I don't know how long these screws are, but I may not have to remove it in its entirety because the main objective here is just to get the Institute building in the grooves that are located on these. And it looks like the screws are pretty lengthy so let's let's see here real quick so if I get this yeah so I need to get this in the groove but also get that portion in that slot so you've got this slot right here that this portion right here is supposed to go into guys that goes into that that stays in there this squeezes together on the other side. So now that I'm in that groove, I can hold this together and tighten these back up without actually having to remove anything. All right, so with both of those tightened up, The building is officially in the groove down there, in the grooves on the sides, and now we can test it to make sure it's actually going to work. Now we should be able to use a 9 volt battery. Ooh! That looks like it's working just fine to me. Nice and quiet too. Hold on, let me get it connected again. Turn it around this way so you can see it. Oh yeah. That is nice. Stop it in the up position right there. All right, so now I know that mechanically, this thing should be good to go and even electrically when it comes to just you know power all right on to the next step we got our back box completely opened up and speaker panels laying down because we're gonna need to access the interconnect board that's down here he has politely labeled every one of these to the correct socket that they go to so that's honestly really good less likely for people to make a mistake and three of these are going down here on the interconnect board and this one says j1 this one's going to be going up to the power supply board up here and uh, we'll do that last like i said we're following the instructions so first up is j12 
which is this one down here. All right, so J12, and then all I need to do is find the one that says J12 on here somewhere. It's J19, J12, all right, and it's keyed. So, shouldn't be able to mess this up. That's how I've got that installed there. And I'm not too worried about wire management at this point, because like I said, I'm doing a complete restoration on this one, so all this is going to be coming out. But if you're going to be caring about your wire management, then you might want to do it right now. Next up is J8 and J19. These two right here. J8 down here. Which one says J8? This one says J8. It's keyed just like the last one so that goes there. Then it slides back into the board and this one right here is J19. 18. Is it this? It's got to be this one right here. Can't see it worth a dang. Uh, where did that go? This one's going to be a little tricky to access, it looks like. Because everything else is in the way. This isn't going to be as challenging for you guys at home because you're not going to be trying to record this. Alright. So now that's in position. Now the only thing I've got left now left to do is power going to the power supply. So the power supply one is right here. Once again, keyed. And there we go. So now we're all connected to where the game should know how to use it. And then all we gotta do now is just run this cable down through the back box underneath the play field. All right, left through the play field, I can see the cables down here. All right. So that definitely should be plenty long enough to reach right there all right what's the next instruction say all right it says that we're going to test the unit using the gain now so all right so i'm going to connect this to that and it says Hold the assembly loosely in your hand and power up the game. The Institute should reset automatically. The Institute will bob up and down once or twice as the unit homes itself. Alright, here we go. Well, looks like it did what it's supposed to do. So, we'll turn off the game now. All right, so it looks like the unit should work. So, the Institute is supposed to go back through this hole from underneath the play field. Now, the instructions tell me in order to make that happen, I've got to remove this wire loom ring and this wire loom ring right here in order for it to get in there. Ouch. So, I'm going to be removing this and there's another quarter inch over here I'll be removing that so I can get this wire loom out of the way and I now have a fully assembled unit PCB board on the back shielding on the front and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to have to make our way 
back into this game by maneuvering around all of the cabling and the lights. Mm. All right, so we're now in the slot and it also tells me that I'm gonna have to do a visual lineup to make sure that this is possibly not gonna be hitting the ramp behind it. It goes over that in the instructions. And I guess you wanna make sure that you're not gonna be hitting anything on the front whenever it's going back into the play field. And I'm gonna have to drill new holes, it looks like. Man, this is gonna be a lot easier on my new play field so I can get it on the rotisserie or lift this play field out of here so I could really access everything. It just sucks the positioning of where this damn thing is and how these System 11s work. I might just take it out of the damn cabinet of this play field and flip it over just so I can <laughs> easily do this. All right, so change of plans, guys. I have got the play field upside down utilizing my um, uh, play field jacks. I'm merely just wanting to get this on here to show you how I've also uh, used the battery trick again to lower this down. So that way I can make sure that I've got full clearance of the play field. But uh, we're going to maneuver this if we can. Just these wires that are in the way are a major hindrance to this. I'm going to put the wires above so I can actually see. And that actually might be better because I can position it and the wires will hold it steady. Make sure it's not rubbing back there on anything. Yeah, so this is definitely gonna be a tricky part for people right here, is making sure that you've got full clearance around the mech and it's not gonna be rubbing against the play field. Now, I would love to tell you that this was easy, but sadly it wasn't. Getting these two screws for this mount when you've got this bundle of joy right here in your way is not easy. So uh, this is definitely going to be a process, especially if you keep the play field in the cabinet. Uh, I would keep note of this GI line that's right here to make sure you're not touching that. I don't see uh, a reason for me to make sure that these are all nice and strapped down, at least on this play field, because I'm going to be taking it all apart anyways. I've got the uh, illumination for all those on this building all connected again. That connector is back in there. So all I need to do is get the play field swapped over. Mount this to that connector. And I made sure I've got clearance for the front of the building. So it shouldn't be rubbing on anything. Matter of fact, I guess I can get the uh, battery over here. We can test it. Alright, looks like smooth sailing, nothing rubbing against the play field. Alright, let's get this play field back up on the right orientation. Alright, we're all connected back over here. We can lower this play field down. So something else they mentioned in the instructions is that the Repro ramps, sometimes they're a little wider, so you got to watch out for this corner right here to make sure you're not going to be rubbing into those. Now, I do have the repro ramp, so I guess that's something I will be looking out for whenever I do that install. But it looks like we got plenty of clearance right there. All right, guys, we're going to do a uh, we're going to power it on now, see how things look. Looks like it's all honed up and we're gonna test it out in action now I'm definitely curious uh, 
Uh, looks like it works, but I'm curious about the guardrail up here. An adjustment to this right here or something. Make sure it's able to go a little farther over. Otherwise, sometimes it comes down here like that. But luckily, it's got a built-in, you know, ball search. So even if it was to get stuck right there. Anyways, get out. So there is that. But there you go. I look like I got a, a sinking building mod is successfully installed.